Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are in hopefully the last week of the CB period, starting work. Well, some of us at least, you know, going back uh, if you can, uh, if you really need to next week. Now, this is a very unusual uh, period unprecedented because uh, of the impact on the trade, supply chains, and the financial markets on a global scale. Now, with US now at the epicenter, it has infected more than 5.8 million people with 357 deaths. In Singapore, we are number one, uh, I must say, uh, in uh, Asia. We have uh, 33,249 confirmed cases and 23 deaths as of yesterday. Uh, that's because we actually test quite a number of people. Now, uh, it's reported that in the States, more than 40 million applications for unemployment benefits uh, since the outbreak of the uh, pandemic. In Singapore, we have more than 8,000 companies have shut down since April and job losses were projected to range from 45,000 to 200,000 by analysts. Now, our un unemployment rate in March actually we, uh, dropped to 3.3% uh, and the MTI growth forecast for the year has been revised from minus 4 to minus 1% to minus 7 to minus 4%. Now, this itself is, like I say, unprecedented. So we foresee that a lot of retrenchment uh, will carry on. In fact, um, after the CB is over and after the packages have been dispensed out, we foresee that uh, there will be even more retrenchments coming up. That's why uh, looking at the social impact of such retrenchments and uh, on the lives and the livelihoods of the employees and their families, we are encouraging that retrenchment should only be used as a last resort. Now, we are going to talk about uh, uh, several things uh, this afternoon very quickly. Um, we are going to talk about the legal rights and obligations about retrenchments. We are going to talk about the governmental guidelines so far, Ting Hu has been very supportive. We are going to talk about the avenues available to employers, uh, for those li employers listening in, you're not alone. We are going to talk about alternatives to retrenchment. And of course, last but not least, we're going to talk about what if retrenchment is inevitable. And we will conclude it by what are the, some of the key points that you can actually take away for employers uh, if you want to uh, go about retren really retrenching as a last resort. Okay, now, legal rights and obligations. Um, what is retrenchment? If you look at um, the, the definition of retrenchment itself, now, this is actually a termination of your uh, employment, uh, okay, based on some of the redundancy because of the grounds of redundancy. Yeah? Now, the redundancy itself can be a redundancy of the employer's uh, employee's position or the redundancy of the hit count, for example, in terms of numbers. Now, retrenchment always takes place when a company decides either to cease operations um, in terms of either liquidation or winding up of the company pursuant to Section 253 of the Companies Act sometimes due to cash flow and in this kind of times you're probably due to cash flows issues huh? uh, and it's also important to note that even though you may wind up or cease operations under section 328 of your company's act huh, retrenchment benefits are paid in priority to other debts uh, upon winding up the company now also retrenchment can also occur when there's massive restructuring now massive restructuring can include judicial management under section 227a of the company's act by either a company or its creditors now uh we don't uh, well i mean for this uh, for the purpose of this talk we don't talk about uh restructuring in terms of uh um well voluntary retrenchment uh voluntary restructuring for the sake of having more profits but in, if let's say there's a judicial management going on, what happens? Okay. Now, of course, it also can occur in when it can, in cases of mergers and acquisitions. For example, when there's a sale of business to another party, or uh, when there's an acquisition uh, or, or mergers of two companies coming in together. For example, the acquisition itself can be a share acquisition or asset acquisition. Now, where there is any asset acquisition and there's a change in the legal entity running the business. The acquirer will sometimes, but not always, offer to continue to employ existing employees to run the business. Now, no matter what the reason is, all employers in Singapore are encouraged and expected to manage the retrenchment matters wisely and responsibly, especially if the company is unionized. Okay. Now, going on to my next slide, it talks about employers' rights and obligations. Now, 
any termination itself must follow the terms and conditions as spelled out in the employment uh, agreement. Now, this is uh, important because an employer who, when they reach to retrench workers uh, and ending and terminating the employment relationship, should follow whatever contractual obligations that they have already reached with this particular employee. Now, of course, some of you, some of my clients will always ask me, for retrenchment itself, do we actually include that in the uh, employment contract? Now, that in itself, if you have included that, uh, if you will see later in case laws, that gives some rights to this particular employee. So very much it depends on the bargaining position of the parties and whether how much bargain uh, parties will follow up with this uh, employment relationship. Now, of course, if you look at the, uh, in most of these cases, the retrenchment will, when, when you do retrenchment exercise, you've got to look at it from a legal point of view. And some of these points for consideration includes the retrenchment notices, okay, um, to the employees, the conditions under, uh, under which the employment can be actually be terminated. Um, the when a, term, when a termination can actually be initiated, termination notice itself. Now for termination notice employees, uh, you have to give actually the notice. Now the notice duration is actually under the contract, like what I've said, stated earlier, or in the absence of it, um, if it under the Employment Act itself, uh, for the employment period of less than two weeks, it's a one day. But if let's say you have employed for more than five years and above, it's at least four weeks. Now. Um, MOM has come up with certain uh, retrenchment guidelines in terms of notification and uh, I will talk a little bit about it later and of course you can ask MOM officers later. Now, this going on to um, the termination payments itself, now retrenchment benefits, now under section 45 of the Employment Act itself, this actually this entitles uh, a workman or of, on a salary of not more than 4,005 or a non-workman employee other than managers and executives whose salary is more than 2006 per month who have worked for two years continuously or less from being entitled to retrenchment benefits. Now, in simple terms, basically it means that if you are, okay, even when an employee has been continuously employed for two years or more, okay, the employee does not enjoy this automatic right to retrenchment benefits, okay, as there is no legal obligations unless the contractual uh, well, unless you have a contractual provided, uh, contracts provided for it, uh, the contractual rights to it, okay? Now, the Employment Act itself does not dictate the nature uh, or amount of such benefits and leaves it very much to the mutual agreement. Now, common practice in Singapore, I think employers should know, is to pay two weeks to one month salary per year of service. Now, of course, nothing is going to stop the company from offering extra share payment, depending very much on the financial situation of the company. Now, important and uh, well, any silver lining to the cloud for employees who got retrenchment benefits, um, the loss of employment uh, to compensate for the loss of employment it is actually not taxable. So this is different from other kinds of uh, benefits, or other kinds of income you get under the Singapore Income Tax Act. Okay. Now, moving on to the relevant case laws, um, that's what uh, you may want to hear. Now, in Singapore, what happened is that we see an increasing number of cases whereby you have what we call disguise retrenchment. Basically, um, instead of telling you that you are being retrenched, I disguise it to say that maybe there's some form of restructuring. Okay, so we look at some of the case laws to see what uh, the courts actually stands for. Now, one of the most classic case is Bethlehem Singapore Private Limited against Le Hock Singh. It's a court of appeal case whereby the company actually served retrenchment notice stating that employees were entitled to half a, a month basic wage for each year, which was agreed upon with its union. Now, some employees had the clause in their contract entitling them to retrenchment benefits in accordance with the company's current or prevailing policies and practices. Now, this is where they tried to test it. So they sought one month pay instead of half a month uh, as prescribed uh, by the employers. So this was, but this one month, they try to do it by way of an example because this was actually sought um, earlier in an earlier retrenchment exercise by a different batch of employees. So they try to use that as an example and as an illustration. However, the Court of Appeal held that amount of retrenchment benefits is entirely discretionary. So there's no rule of law to the effect that once the discretion has been ex consistently exercised in a certain way, like in the previous payment, it must be uh, exercised in the same way 
uh, subsequently. So it is actually entirely discretionary. Now, moving on to the next case, which is a Liu Xiaohua against AIA, uh, a high court case in 1998. Now, this is where an employee was retrenched after 16 years of service. Okay, now he was paid his salary, annual wage supplement, annual leave pro rata, and was given extra share payment of five months salary. Now, he wanted more, okay? So he went on the basis that, on the basis that hey, um, I wanted retrenchment benefits of one month or 1.225 months, okay, based on the collective agreement with unionized employees. Now, this uh, is uh, important here is because he is actually not really unionized, okay? So the High Court held that the company is in no way committed itself to give retrenchment benefits in the contracts. There was no evidence of a general customs of uh, employees paying retention benefits and the extra share payment is entirely at the unfettered discretion of the defendant okay provided there's no statutory provision or any written law or contractual terms in the contract now going on to the third case which is a more recent case 2002 high court case of ma yu hing it ma wang yu sorry it actually follows the earlier two cases now as a matter of common law in singapore is held that it was common ground that an employee is not entitled to retrenchment benefits on basis of long service, only entitled to be paid if the employer has agreed to do so. Now, in this case, happy ending because they, uh, the court actually finds that she's an employee of the company and she obtained, managed to obtain retrenchment benefits as the defendant's company agreed to pay retrenchment benefits to other employees. So a uh, uh, newer case of a Liu founding against Ko Tong, uh, Ko Yin Kyung. Now, this is High Court case. Now, this case itself uh, highlights the same principle whereby retrenchment benefits paid in absence of any contractual or statutory provisions were given on an ex gratia basis. Okay, so it doesn't give rise to any legal obligation on the part of the employer to pay the benefits in all the cases. Now, the last case, which is the, the, mo the latest case, it cites the earlier case of Liu Xiaohua. This is a district court case whereby retrenchment benefits could not be implied into an employment contract. So you got to look at, for employers, look at employment contract itself to see whether do we actually have all those uh, express provisions in employment contracts. Now the payment of any retention benefits, again, it was emphasized is at the unfettered discretion of the employer, okay? Uh, there have been no statutory provisions or any contractual uh, term to compel such payments, okay? So, uh, Take away employers, yes, you are at a much stronger position, um, but do take heart that employees may suffer and the impact that they have on their lives and their families. Okay, moving on to now governmental guidelines. This is where the government comes in. Now, the government has actually um, issued certain of these guidelines, and some of these guidelines, the relevant gu MOM guidelines, okay, is advisory on salary and leave, whereby the uh, government is attempting to help business cope with salary costs and prevents um, retrenchment. Uh, tripartite partners are strongly urge uh, employers not to resort to retrenchments. Eh? So this one, I will leave it to uh, well to the relevant uh, my relevant partners in the panelists to talk about it. Mental well-being. Uh, employees may be anxious about job uh, security and may suffer from social isolation. So all these are guidelines to help them uh, in the in the morale. Then we have, of course, flexible work arrangements, which is the flexi time refers to the scheduling of programs uh, for full-time employees, allowing them to have a different start, different finishing daily, for example, giving them a stipulated number of hours. Uh, this is to try to motivate and retain value employees uh, who are dedicated and continue in playing important role in helping the company. Now, also, of course, you can have this, what we call a second job arrangement, where there is no jobs, employers should support employees with reduced work hours to take on the second job, for example, to make up for lost income. Now, this is uh, a very um, ambitious uh, for employers, but do take note that this can actually be done. And of course, you can have this um, to res uh, respond to this mandatory uh, retrenchment uh, notification and retrenchment benefits, okay? So that in itself, those are ways in which you can manage excess manpower and responsible retrenchment. And last but not least, uh, for retrenchment notification, uh, I just want to, to highlight that 
MOM must be notified uh, of retrenchment of five or more employees within any six months period. Uh, if let's say your your company has got ten or more employees, uh, so and employees have got to be uh, notified of retrenchment in a particular format. All this actually can be found in the guidelines. I'm not going to spend time talking about it. You can actually go to MOM's website. Please visit them now. Next, now what happens if you uh you as an employer you find it difficult. Uh, and you had need to do. You what can you do? Avenues available to employers. Of course, the Fortitude budget, the latest one that we have, is thirty three billion dollars. Unity, resilience, solidarity budget, uh, solidarity budgets all came out to almost ninety three billion dollars. Now, a lot of companies like SIA, Capital Land, Tomasek, Singtel have actually turned to cost cutting measures. Now, so what are some of these cost cutting measures that actually you can help? Now, one of the most popular is what we call the JSS, the Job Support Scheme, whereby uh, a lot uh, employers actually can retain and continue to pay their lo local employees with the government paying seventy five percent of the uh, cost uh, for the month of April and May itself. Now, uh, I'm glad to say that with the latest uh, uh, budget, uh, this has actually uh, gone on to for an extension. Of course, the next is what we call the FWS, which is the flexible work schedule, which employers uh, uh, exempt employees from employment act requirements for overtime, rest day, public holidays. So the hours that are not worked are actually accumulated. You can actually accumulate like how you put it in a bank. So it becomes a time banking system. And the, with the wages already paid, so these accumulated hours or wages can actually be drawn down when uh, employee clocks over time, for example. The next is what we call the FW, uh, FWF, the, of course, the foreign workers levy for those employees in the construction sector. Good news for them because there was a waiver of this for April and May. And of course, there's a one-time rebate. And with this latest uh, budget, again, uh, you get another uh, sum of rebate. Huh? Next is what we call the WCS, which is Enhanced Work Credit Scheme. Um, under WCS, you can actually increase the gross monthly wage of qualifying employee. Now, this actually gives employers an added incentive uh, to continue increasing wages despite the economic downturn. The government is supportive of this. Of course, the next is what we call the EDG, Enterprise Development Grant. Now, this helps the, the business to innovate and venture overseas, for example. And last but not least, you have the PSG, which is the product Productivity Solutions Grant. Now, it's a good time for uh, uh, employers to look at how things are done. Maybe it's about time you adopt IT technology, move on to enhance business processes. Now, alternatives to, um, we talk about alternatives to uh, retrenchment, where what happened is that if you are, you know, say, say uh, you cannot, uh, you're insufficient uh, for you to maintain healthy balance sheets. What will happen? Uh, what are some of these alternatives? Now, we will encourage you to take a long-term view okay, of this, and you can go for what we call training. Okay? Now, be, this itself, we encourage that before employers take up these cost-saving measures, consult with employees, obtain their consent, such that you're able to document whatever variation that you have in your employment contracts. Now, training itself is very important. I think uh, I will leave the MOM to talk about. Now, just a good example, the local listed company, Yuan Sung, has actually sent their, their workers for training during this period. So it was reported uh, recently. Next, of course, you have redeployment. Re now, a good example, again, is this aviation company called UBTS. They actually redeploy their excess workers to confectionery Pun Huat for their retail operations. So employers can actually uh, think about the redeploying their excess workplace. Uh, and of course, the next will be the implementing a shorter work week. Um, also, you can in fact have a temporary, what we call a temporary layoffs. Now, this is actually asking employee to start coming into for work for a short period, but you have you still have obligations towards your employees to pay at least fifty percent of their gross salary during the days that they are temporarily laid off. Okay, and of course, you do have other cost saving measures like adjustments to AWS and, and components, and of course, the last. That we that we want to see is what we call the no pay leave. Now that in itself actually has been exercised and uh, been practiced by some of the employers that we know of. Okay, so going on, um, if retrenchment is inevitable, now why is it so? Because in a poll taken by MOM during early April, twenty three percent of the companies poll anticipate reducing their workforce in the next two months. So what if it's really inevitable? Now that depends on your financial position. If you are in sound financial position, what should you do? We actually encourage you to continue paying retention benefits, okay? 
based on existing uh, contracts, employment contracts, collective agreements, MOUs. Okay. Now, what if you can't? So that's when the employer should actually work and try to negotiate with employees for a fair retention benefit linked to their years of services. Now, if let's say you are in dire financial difficulties, okay, so um, again, there should be retrenchment uh, uh, negotiation for retrenchment benefits package. And for non-unionized, um, you may even think of having a lump sum payment for retrenchment sum, for example, taking into consideration, of course, the contributions. Now, what we want employers to think about is be more generous towards the lower wage workers and support them for if let's say they have to, um, you know, employees need to find new jobs um, who actually meet eligibility criteria for the COVID uh, support grant. Tell them, match them with, for example, the NTUC's Job Security Council. Um, just it was reported that the NTUC Job Security Council actually helped 7,000 of such employees for job matching actually during this employment period. So if retrenchment is inevitable, what happens? So we are expected, employees are expected to be fair and responsible. Okay, and ensuring in the selection of employees for retrenchment. Now, you don't you don't um, select them based on gender or race. Uh, basically, on uh, a lot of them will be selected based on your operational requirements, of course. But you shouldn't have any discrimination. You should notify the government and unions of retrenchment, and you should communicate to uh, to employees early. For example, the notice period, the retrenchment benefits, and the retrenchment facilitation. Now, it's it's, it's a lot because, like I say, I mean, of consideration that you have to take into account. Uh, if you need, uh, you can take this offline if you need more uh, information. All right. Now, going on, so we want to conclude the fact that um, for employees, I can actually recommended to consider uh, in order of priorities. This is based on the NWC guidelines: reduction of wage costs first, then you have consideration of various measures to utilize or access uh, and manage excess manpower, tapping on government support to offset business and wage costs. And of course, if let's say you have to, trimming of wage costs, and last but not least, retrenchment as only a last resort. Remember, when every door closes, another will open. Now, that doesn't mean that um, you should let off whoever that have worked with you for a long time, they are your precious resources and you are having an impact on their lives and not just the livelihood, but the lives of the family members as well. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.